can see how you can make a stupid statement like that. Nothing stupid about it. It happens to be a fact. The old timers were much better. You mean to tell me there hasn't been a ball player since Ty Cobb? That's what I said. Well, who's been playing the game then for the last 25 years? Oh, a bunch of overgrown sandlotters. Routine heart attack. Guy's been dead about eight hours. I'll make out the report later. Babe Ruth was a sandlotter. Oh, Bruce was a fair country ball player. What about pitchers? I haven't heard of one since Walter Johnson. You've been buried. How about Hubble, Lefty Grove, Dizzy Dean, Feller? Who did they ever pitch against? Oh, nobody. You guys start this again, I'm going to call a cop. What about Ruth, Gary, and Henry. DiMaggio? Yeah, what about DiMaggio? Yeah. He's a good ball player. Yeah. Well, the rest of the country will be mighty glad to hear that you feel that way about him. Been some trouble over at the Hawaiian club. Some guy got slugged pretty bad. It's just as silly as saying there hasn't been a great football player since Jim Thorpe. Well, name me one. Gentlemen, the people over at the Hawaiian club are waiting for a little law and order. Red Grange, the Four Horsemen, Sid Luckman, Tommy Harmon. Never heard of them. What newspapers do you read? There hasn't been a good newspaper since the old New York world. Hawaiian club, use the whistle. What do you mean the winters aren't as cold as they used to be? What about that blizzard that swept the country a couple of years ago? Well, I'll admit it was a little chilly. Yeah. Billy, you know how hard we try to keep this a nice, quiet place? It wasn't anything much, a little argument over a girl. Both of the boys had been drinking. How is he? He's still out. This is Dr. Masterson. He happened to be in a club. I called for an ambulance. Must have hit his head when he went down. Well, where's the strong heart who did it? You the guy who slugged that fellow? Just an argument. This fellow walked up while we were dancing and started making some remarks. About her? Yeah. I didn't have nothing to do with it. I want to see my lawyer. What's your name? Ivana Dare. Sounds like a cheap perfume. Well, fella, you better come along with us. You too. I didn't lay a glove on the guy. I was an innocent bystander. You're not going to the death cell, Yvonne. Just to the police station. Check on that ambulance, will you? Right. How's he coming, Doc? Well, his pulse is very weak. Well, do what you can. You take him on down, Bailey. I'll round up some witnesses. I got my rights. I want a lawyer. Yvonne, come along like a nice little girl. Before I remember that, I saw you in the lineup two weeks ago. Now then, kiddies, I want to hear the whole story. No, no, Fred, it's pure routine. I know it was Mitchell's son. That's the reason I took over myself. I don't care who you are. I'm district attorney. Call me at 5 o'clock. I'll give you a statement then. Keep the papers off my neck for a while, Eddie. Mitchell's a big man politically. And a pain personally. Call the girl in. Send the girl in. Right, the girl. OK, sister, it's your turn. I want a lawyer. I'm a lawyer. What can I do for you? I've got my rights. Sure you have. Sit down. I've got a daughter your age, and the only thing legs mean to me are something you've got to keep covered with nylon. What's your name? Yvonne Adair. Let's try it again and make it sound right. Bertha. Bertha what? Bertha Williams. Where do you live, Bertie? With my folks. Where? 1713 Court Street. You sure about that? Yes, sir. But lately I've been staying with a girlfriend. Where? 206 Dover Street. Ever been arrested? Oh, no, honestly. All right, I Bertie, all right. I want you to tell me exactly what happened last night. Don't make any mistakes. Yes, sir. Well, I was sitting in this bar, just minding my own business. What bar? What time? The Hawaiian Club, about 11. Go on. Well, this fella came in, spoke to me, bought me a drink. You'd never seen him before? Oh, no, honest, I had. Go on. Well, at first I was insulted. Never mind that stuff. All I wanted the facts. What did he say then? He said he hadn't been in town long and he was lonesome. And it was his birthday. And he asked me if I'd dance with him. So I thought there wasn't any harm in it. And then? 
Well, we were just dancing and this Mr. Mitchell came up. You know him? Sort of. Ever been out with him? Uh-huh. Then what did he do? Well, he started making some cracks. And he tried cutting in while I was dancing with the young man. When my guy wouldn't let him, he got sore. Then he wanted me to come over to his table. And when I wouldn't, he called me a name. That's what started everything, the young man said. You've insulted this lady. He meant me. Apologize to her. Then Mr. Mitchell let loose with some words and reached back to his hip pocket. What for? It was only for his handkerchief. Then what? My guy hit him. Yeah? Well, he fell down and he just stayed there. I think he hit his head on something. All right, Bertie, you can go. Come back at 5 o'clock. And Bertie, don't talk to anybody. Oh, no, sir. I mean, yes, sir. That the last of the witnesses, Eddie? That's all. Bring the boy in. Okay. All right. You're Joe Huford. Yes, sir. Sit down. Cigarette? No, thanks. Don't smoke? Yeah, I don't feel like it. Joe, you're in a pretty bad spot. Who have you talked to so far? The police and a lawyer who came to see me. What the lawyer have to say? He told me not to do any talking. That's good advice. Particularly, don't say anything to me. My job is to prosecute you. You understand that, don't you? Yeah. You mind if I ask a question? No, go ahead. When you tell me what all the fuss is about, I had a few drinks and I hit a guy. It happens every day. You know who the boy was? I've never seen him before. Anyone told you he died this morning? Not just a barroom brawl now, Joe. A man is dead. You did it. Well, it was just an accident. He's still dead. When somebody gets killed, somebody has to pay for it. That happens to be the law, Joe. He started it. You can ask anyone who was there. I have. They told me he started it. That's what keeps it from being first-degree murder. It was just a rotten break. He must have... Hit his head when he... He did. I have it right here on the report. Joe, as you say, it's a rotten break. That's the way it goes sometimes. Who's your attorney? Uh, uh, Mr. Bradley. The company I work for sent him over. You work for Dutton and Eldridge. How long have you been with him? Uh, about a month. Where are you from? Plainfield. Any family? Yeah, father. Can he help? Uh, not very much. Anyway, I wouldn't ask him. Why? Well, he's pretty old and needs everything he's got. Joe, don't you realize you're going to need all the help you can get? Uh, no, I've never been in this kind of trouble before. That's the way things work out sometimes. Look, Joe, you've got a good war record, no previous arrests, but I'm still on a job where I have to prosecute. You understand that, don't you? Oh, no, how could I understand? Well, that's the way it is. That's all, Joe. I have to go back to the jail now and stand trial, huh? Yeah. You won't believe it was an accident. I believe it. But there's a man dead, accident or no accident, you knocked him down and killed him. Buford's attorney's here. Have him wait. Joe! Tell him to wait. Is your lawyer any good? I haven't any idea. If he knows what he's doing, he'll stand a good chance. Once we get into court, I can't give you any breaks. Do you understand that? Yeah, I suppose so. What do you think, Eddie? Tough luck for Huford. Yeah, but who asked him to go out and get drunk last night? Who asked him to get in a fight? Send his attorney in. Send him in. I'm Vernon Bradley. I'll be him and Bradley and Nerney. Make yourself at home, Mr. Bradley. Thank you. Care for a cigar? Uh, no, no, thank you. Beerman, Bradley, and Nearney. Never run into you fellas before, have I? No, we're corporation attorneys. Wanted a little far over on the wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> what are you doing handling a criminal case? 
The firm that Huford works for is one of our largest accounts. They have asked us to handle it. Oh, I see. I talked with my client this morning. What do you think? Well, I think the whole thing's very unfortunate. I imagine the dead boy would feel the same way. Uh, Huford impresses me as being clean-cut and sincere. He's never been in any trouble before. The whole thing might be a case of temporary insanity. Bradley, have you ever actually handled a criminal case before? I told you we were corporation attorneys. You enter a plea of temporary insanity, you'll be laughed right out of court. Well, I hardly... I have witnesses, man. He wasn't insane, he was drunk. I believe it's my client's right to enter whatever plea he chooses. It's also your client's right to serve 20 years if his case isn't handled right. Well, I didn't come down here to get a lesson. Wait a minute, wait a minute. It's just that you're a little bit out of your field. I feel that Hubert's had a bad break. I'd, I'd like to see him get a good one now. I'll accept a plea of manslaughter. That's one to ten years. Don't you think that's a little steep? No steeper than being dead on a morgue slab. Bradley, this is not like reorganizing a company. A man's dead. Somebody's got to pay for it. Look, why don't you play it smart? Why don't you call in somebody like Conway or Destro? Our firm is not in the habit of calling in men like that. No. Destro used to be my law partner. Let me tell you something. We knew our way around the courtroom. <laughs> Do you want to know how I'd handle this case if I were on the other side of the fence? First, I'd object on any juror that didn't have a son in the service. Then I'd drag out his war record. I'd spend two days on it. I'd take him from the day he entered boot camp to the day he got his decoration on Okinawa. Then I'd pull in 50 character witnesses, from the old lady who's known him since he was born to his last commanding officer. Then I'd start in on intent. That's important, Bradley. Was there any intent? I'd harp on it till it was coming out of the judge's ears. You got all of that, Eddie? Yes, sir. I'll give you a copy, Bradley. Thank you, Mr. Nolan, but I don't think I shall need it. You don't, huh? It's a little emotional for me. I've always believed that the law is pretty well stated and that the less emotion brought into it, the better. Let me tell you, there's a lot of emotion connected with killing somebody. Seeing your client go up for a few years has even more. We shall try to see to it that that doesn't happen. Goodbye, Mr. Nolan. And thank you. There goes a first-class, double-breasted, overstuffed idiot. Yeah. Too bad for Huford. Yeah. Here's a case a junior law clerk could win with an IQ of 50. What now, boss? Type that up. We'll put a copy in the mail to Bradley anyway. You've been found guilty of killing your fellow man. Murder was not your intent, but drunkenness is no excuse for violation of the law. Therefore, it's the sentence of this court that you, Joe Hubert, be imprisoned in the state prison for a term from one to ten years. Court is adjourned. People being railroaded, but never by their own attorney. I heard that, Mr. Noland. Good, it's the first thing you have heard. You fumbled every chance I threw you. Even the judge was trying to help when you wouldn't listen. Lucky they don't convict lawyers for incompetence. If there's anything. I'm sorry, son. I guess it couldn't be helped, Dad. I'll be up to see you whenever they let me. And Joe. I know this isn't much help, but. I have something for you to come out to. That'll help a lot. So long. See you soon. How do you feel, Ed? Like going out and getting drunk. It was pretty bad. It's the first time I ever saw you try to lose a case. I'm not very good at that, I guess. How about lunch? Sure. You know, I'd sell this job mighty cheap right now. No, I won't play casino with you. Why don't you learn some of the new games? They don't make any sense. I'm surprised you don't want to play Old Maid. I will if you want to. This guy doesn't think anything's happened since McKinley got shot. If you try to talk about Roosevelt, he thinks you're talking about the Rough Riders. How'd you two grab this gravy trip? Oh, I got seniority. I like to have him along to argue with. You got a cigarette? Yeah. You'll get used to it. How long are you up for? One to ten. 
Just a holiday weekend. Have you been there before? The boys run a regular shuttle service for me. Well, you don't seem to mind it. I mind plenty. Wait till your next trip. Who says he has to make more than one trip? I wasn't planning on it myself. That's tough, Mallaby, but you did break parole. Only Douglas would have reported it. Or should I say Captain Douglas? Captain Douglas, you're wanted in the warden's office. For the first six months, you don't touch the machine. You understand? Come on. Show him what to do with the hamper. Yes, sir. And no talk. Fair enough. I'd only do something different just once. Be two minutes late locking the doors. Forget to ring a bell. It's like locking up animals. You've only been here six months. You just don't appreciate everything they do for you here. Sure, Joe. You want a lot of nosy strangers coming around all night? And women bothering you at all hours? You have a bad day at the office? I sold everything I made. Ah, that's the idea, Joe. You just keep working away in the laundry, keep your nose to the wet wash, so to speak, and one of these days you'll find yourself at the top. Does it smell any better than at the bottom? How long can a guy last in that place? I never knew anyone who wanted to try for the record. Look, Joe, you can still get a break. After you've served six months, it's up to the parole board as to how long you stay in here. Yeah, I know. I come up before the board for sentence tomorrow. How do you know? Ponty told me. Are you palling around with Ponty now? He passed me a note. I told you, Joe, don't have anything to do with that guy. When he hands you a favor with one hand, he knights you with the other. I never mind that. The important thing is Joe's sentence. Why, he could be out of here in a little while if they'd take it easy on him. What's the usual sentence? The usual doesn't matter. The law says one to ten years. Well, two years is between one and ten. Yeah. Uh, so is nine. Maybe you'll get a break. Like you did, huh? Doesn't always happen that way. Sure, Joe. You've already done six months. Six months? I spent four years in the Army. Didn't seem half as long as six months in here. The case of Joe Hubert. Manslaughter. Yes, I went over this case last night. There were certain extenuating circumstances. I felt that, too. The boy he killed was old John Mitchell's son.
Well, it looks pretty run-of-the-mill. I thought five years. That makes him eligible for parole in three. Five years. from the people he's staying with. How is he? Not so good. He hasn't been out of bed for three weeks. Are you really going to try to break out of here? Sure. When? I was talking to Potty today. We figure a week from next Wednesday. With Ponty after everything I told you? You never told me anything. You just said you didn't like him. I'll tell you plenty of things. I've known that rat for 15 years. We did time once before together. Yeah, I know that. Do you know how he got out? He said he busted out. <laughs> That's a howl. He was in on a break, sure. But when the time came, there was 20 guards with machine guns waiting for them. They went down like lead soldiers. How did Pony get away? Through the warden's office, with a parole in his hand. He squealed. That was the general impression at the time. All right, he's out. Thanks, Malibu. How about me being in? You're gonna need someone else. You're crazy. You're up for parole in a few months. Well, what good is that going to do if my father dies first? You'll be back here for life if you try a crazy stunt like that. I've got to see him. How about it, Mapes? Look out. <clears throat> What'd you do last night, Mapes? Oh, nothing much. Uh, called up a couple of girls, went out to dinner, and we had a few drinks at the Macambo. What about you? I'm surprised we didn't run into you. We were making a round still, weren't we, Joe? Yeah. Who'd you have with you? Well, who can remember names? They were all society girls from Pasadena. <laughs> Next time, give me a call. I'll be glad to go along. These girls want character references. Mallaby, sometimes I think you forget which side of the bars you're on. No, Douglas. That's something I never forget. Keep it quiet in here. kind of afraid of you. I don't blame him. You won't ever get him. He watches you every second. There'll be one or two when he forgets. Just like I forgot out in parole one day. One lousy day. Douglas sees me having a beer with an old friend. He reports me because the old friend is an ex-con. Back for 12 years. 12 years for one little beer. Let's play some cards. How about my taking Pony's place? Leave him out of it, Mapes. I mean it. No. You heard me, Mapes. Sure. You 
on the break, Joe? Don't you know, buddy? Well, I thought you knew everything. We're all set for Friday. The guns are in the laundry room. Why Friday? I thought we were going Wednesday. Auntie's out. He knows about Wednesday. You sure you don't know too much about everything else? Yeah. Let's take a chance. What do you want? I thought you might change your mind. Not a chance. You've been spreading some rumors about me? Yeah. Well, why don't you lay off? Because you'd set fire to your sister for a dime. Because you're first, last, and always a rat. And Look out. So he says to this preacher, Reverend, I'd be glad to organize a choir for you. But what's our angle on the deal? <laughs> All right, get up. And keep moving. You're like a bunch of old women when you get some news. Who's got any news? Now, don't tell me you gossips ain't heard we're getting a new warden. When? This week. And guess who he is? None other than your old friend, George Nolan. <laughs> who sent him up? Probably old John Mitchell. Nolan was getting a little too big in state politics, and being warden is a one-way trip to no place. Keep moving. Come on, break it up. Yeah, come on, move on. Watch your step, Mallory. We're not all a bunch of fools around here. I'd like to have a talk with you about that sometime, Captain. Get back to it. I said go back to work. Come on, get back to work. What's the matter with you? and you don't have to be too easy on it. All right, start the machines. And get back to work. Staley, number four. Buford, number three. Trouble with Huford? No, sir. Let me know if you do. Yes, sir. Now just stop worrying. This is where your clerical work is done and your files are kept. It's quite handy. Well, what do you think, Kay? Well, it's the biggest office you've ever had. You'll find it very comfortable, George, centrally located with everything under your control. This bridge is an addition. Where's it go? That leads to your living quarters. Of course, there's a good lock on the other door. Very convenient. Hello, Douglas. How do you do, Mr. McKay? Your new boss, George Nolan. Happy to know you, Douglas. Douglas here is the best yard captain in the prison business. I'm going to have to rely on you a lot. That's what I'm here for. Here you had a little trouble this morning. Nothing at all, sir. One of the younger, tougher ones. We took care of him. I'd like to have you meet my daughter. This is Kay. How do you do? Hello. This is our housekeeper, Miss Laurie. I'm glad to know you. Perhaps you can tell us, Mr. Douglas, just how safe will we be here? Safe? Why, ma'am, there's no place safer. The walls are eight feet thick, and you've got guards all around. Oh, what a way to live. I'm sure we'll manage all right, Martha. And just think, Miss Laurie, 
You have better help than you could hire at an employment agency. Bring them in, Douglas. Yes, sir. After all these years to end up in a prison. All right, in here. How often does your parole board meet, McKay? Twice a week. Your household staff, George. This is Melrose, your cook. He used to be head chef at the Richmond Plaza in New York. What are you in for, Melrose? I poison my wife. Oh. I trust you have other hobbies now? Yes, sir. This is Grant, was the warden chauffeur. A good boy. Our board approved his parole. He gets out next week. Wouldn't like to stay over for a while, would you, Grant? <laughs> Every boy has to grow up and leave home sometime, sir. This is your barber. Well, hello, Curly. Hello, Mr. Nolan. I sent you up here, didn't I? For life, sir. Now you're my barber. If that's the way you want it. I wouldn't have anybody else. I like close shaves. Just leave that to me, sir. And this is Mallaby, your houseboy and butler. According to his record, he used to do that kind of work when he was casing a joint. He was so good, some of the people he robbed didn't want to prosecute. You know why? They wanted him to stay on. Those are very fine references, Mallaby. He's here without my recommendations, Warden. Why? I don't think he's to be trusted. Warden Paxton thought so. Well, I don't think I'll be making any changes right away. That's all, men. Thanks. Always for me, aren't you, Captain? There are all your boys, George. Me send up for five years. Uh, he wasn't DA during my time. There he is now. The yellow rat is staying holed up. Don't I wish he'd come around here? His throat. That's where I like to put my hands. You must have sent a few hundred of those up here yourself. Yeah, I suppose I did. That's how you made your record. Now you can make another one by keeping them under control. I don't make records, Mac. I just do jobs. Sure, I know, George, but I was just thinking that a good showing won't hurt you when the election comes around. What is that, Douglas? They call it yammering. They do it when they're sore. I better go down. I'll go with you. I wouldn't go if I were you. You better stay here. Why? It sounds like this music is being staged for your benefit. That's right, Mr. Nolan. I'm sure that's what it is. Kind of a protest, huh? Wait a minute, George. This is bad medicine. You don't have to prove anything to him, Warden. No? You stay here, Douglas. Yeah! 
Hello, Tex. Hi, uh, Mr. Nolan. See you again, Tex. Non l'ho veduto da molto tempo, Luigi. Cinque anni, Mr. Nolan. set for tonight. Want in on it, Mallaby? No. I still have some unfinished business. We can't miss. This is the third time I've seen it tried. They always go out eager and they always come back dead. I promised Joe. I thought I told you to lay off him. What difference does it make? He's in solitary anyway. I just wanted you to let him know that I couldn't wait. Lucky for him. has issued instructions that in view of the attempted break last night, the recreational activities of the day are canceled. And everybody's very well pleased with the way you handled the break. Who's everybody? Well, the newspapers. The people who count. That's nice. I left the list here on the desk, George. Go over it as soon as you can. Yeah, I will. Well, Mac, have the office tell Douglas I want to see him in here right away, will you? Sure. See you soon, George. What did I send you up for, Curly? Cutting a man's throat. Close enough, Warden? Yeah. Tell me, Curly, what's between Mallaby and Douglas? They don't like each other. Why? I haven't got time to keep up on everything, Warden. I've only got 99 years to go. The men like Douglas? No. You want to see me, Warden? Yeah. That's all, Curly. You can pick your stuff up later. Yes, sir.
McKay brought a list of the men next in line for parole. I thought you might be able to help me with it. Sure would. I probably know some of them. Hanson, Dexter, Huford. Huford? Yeah. He's the one we had trouble with last week. He just got out of solitary today. Let's take a look at his record. His card won't be up to date. Huford, I think I know it. Sure, I sent him up. What was his trouble? Fighting a guard. We found out later he'd just gotten a telegram that his old man had died. Guess he went a little nuts. Then why was he kept in solitary until today? Well, fighting a guard's serious, Warden. I want to see all of these men, and I want to go over their records. Warden Paxton generally left that to me. From now on, we'll do it together, Douglas. Yes, sir. What about the funeral services for those men that tried to break out? I don't think it's a good idea. It may lead to trouble. We'll take that chance. Send for Huford. Douglas. Have somebody pick me up a safety razor. Yes, sir. sick from overeating. I sent a candy bar down with Nick. I know they found it. Now, Nick's doing a few days down there himself. What happened on the break? Potty squealed like I said he would. Douglas and his men were waiting for him. They got them all. You weren't so bad off where you were after all. What happened to Potty? They got him working in the warden's office. They're trying to get him transferred to some other prison. He'll never get out alive. And Mapes is dead. You should have known better. How can you know anything? Nothing makes any sense. It's always the same. The good guys get it in the neck and the rats get the gravy. Mapes is dead and Pawnee has a soft job in the warden's office. I don't think it'll last too long. Lukert? Yeah? Come on. You want it in the warden's office. What's he want it for? Oh, didn't you know? The warden needs a fourth at bridge. Funny, he didn't check with me to see if it was OK. All right, wise guy, come on. So good, does he? Well, he'll be all right after a couple of days of food. What are we going to do about party? Make his death as painless as possible. But you've got to get me out of here, Warden. I know these guys. I know what they're planning right now. All right, Ponty, calm down. I can't be calm. How can you be calm when you're sitting right in the middle of 2,500 guys and every one of them just waiting a chance to stick a shiv in your back? You're not sitting in the middle of them. There's eight feet of wall and a hundred guards between you. But that ain't what he promised me. He said I'd get out of here. He promised me I'd get out. You had no right to promise him anything, Douglas. It's up to the parole board. You know that. You deal with these things the best way you can, Warden. Yeah, well, I don't think this is the best way. I've never made deals with men like this in my life. All right. What happens to me now? I'm going to try and get you transferred to another prison. What good will that do? They'll be waiting for me there, too. Any prison, any place. You've got to let me out. Get this through your head, Potty. I don't know anything about the deal you and Douglas made. I'll do the best I can. The Warden. You don't know these men. I think I do. That's why I'm keeping you up here working in the office, having your food sent in. I even let you sleep up here. But keep away from me, Potty. I can't stand a whiner. But Warden... That's all, been... Douglas. Cap, you promised. Come on. You know you promised me. Buford, sir, you wanted to see him. I'll see him alone. Hello, Joe. Mr. Nolan. Come in, sit down. Cigarette? I have some. Thanks. time, Joe. Seems that way to me, too. 
I've been looking over your record. You've done pretty well here. If you can call solitary doing pretty well. The guard didn't know your father had died, Joe. Would it have made any difference if he did? I think so. I don't. This is a big place. It's hard to keep track of everybody's personal problems. You managed to keep track of everything else. It was a bad break. I can be some help. I can keep it off your record when you come up for parole. That's hardly in the line of duty, is it? What do you mean? I remember you telling me a couple of times that you had a job to do. No matter how the cards fall, that's the way you have to take them. Yeah, that's right. If I were district attorney again and your case came up, I'd prosecute you again. Then why bother to keep anything off my record? I said prosecute, not persecute. You were pretty crazy about your father, weren't you? Of course I was. My daughter called on him after the trial. I know. He wrote me. Don't you think he'd want you to pull out of this, go ahead and make a life for yourself? I haven't any idea what he'd want. Joe, haven't you some kind of faith or religion? Yeah, I did have. Kind of sprung a few leaks in this place. What are your plans when you get out of here? I haven't any. Can you drive a car? I used to. Are you busy? Step in here for a minute, huh? Joe, other men have had lots worse breaks than you, but they've come through them. How old are you now? 29. You've got a lot behind you for 29. You've got a lot ahead of you, too. Are you going to let everything get you down? I haven't let anything happen. It's just gone ahead and done it. Okay, you remember Joe Huford. Yes. I saw him at the trial. Joe's going to be our new chauffeur. This makes you a trustee, Joe. You'll drive me and my daughter. Do errands. It's one of the best jobs here. I know. Send in a guard. You can start tomorrow. I'll tell Captain Douglas. That's all, Joe. Thanks. Doesn't seem the same, does he? No, he doesn't. He'll be coming up for parole for too long. I thought this job might be a good idea. Help him to readjust himself. You could help, too, if you would. How? Well, he's going to be driving you a lot. Treat him... Treat him more like someone you know rather than a convict. Draw him out. Make him talk about himself. All right. Still have him on your conscience a little bit, haven't you? No, it isn't that. Suggested he's going to be getting out of here soon, and I'd like to see that he's ready for it. Sure, Dad. I'll be glad to help. interested in knowing her anyway. What you think I was going to do, strangle her? In a prison town, you'd think they'd be used to uniforms. Not many of us have a chance to get out and parade around. Did it bother you much? Oh, it's all right. Give them something to scare their children with tonight. How do you like the car? Well, they've done a lot to them in three years. Joe, you know, your father was a fine man. When I went to see him, I was a little afraid he'd resent me. No, he was never like that. Why did you go to see him? Oh, 
Oh, I don't know. I saw him in the courtroom during the trial. He looked so nice. And so brokenhearted when you... He really appreciated your call. I've always meant to thank you for it when I got out. Now you've done it. Take the long way back if you like, Joe. Thanks, Miss Nolan. No, thank you. Tell Melrose I think this pot roast is wonderful. I tasted it, sir, and I told him myself. You might tell him I enjoyed it, too. Yes, sir. How'd it go today? Not so good. You've got to get Joe out of that prison uniform the next time we go into town. What happened? They didn't make him feel too welcome. I should have thought of that myself. We'll have to get him some kind of regular suit. What's the matter, Martha? You're not eating much. I fixed myself a little snack about an hour ago. Why? Well, you can trust that cook if you want to. But when I think of his poor dead wife, poisoned, gasping for breaths... Well, there's another good meal shot. Joe, how are things in the great outside world? People are still living, eating, dying, having babies. They're just one up on us. Nice job. Driving a pretty girl around all day in her old man's car. I know guys that'll break in here for a job like that. How do you get along with her? All right. No better than just all right. Well, what do you expect? I'm not even hired help. Well, you're not so bad looking, Joe. Nothing to what I was when I was your age, but still not too bad. You should have seen me. Why, back in 19... Tell us about it some night, Curly. How about playing some cards? Tell me, Joe. Did you run into Pony lately? Just once. He's scared stiff. He's got reason to be. Shh. You're gonna have a hard time getting to Pony. I think it can be handled when the time comes. When's the time? Right soon. We let you know. No, we won't. We're keeping him out of it. Sink, Joe. Where is everybody? Oh, they're probably at the ball game. Where? Two of our teams are playing in the yard today. Everybody gets out to see them. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. If I had known, I could have driven myself today. I've seen plenty of baseball games. <sighs> I suppose I should start getting things ready for dinner. Yeah, that's a good idea. If you like, I'll do the potatoes. At the loss of how many fingers? What do you mean? You're talking to a man who worked his way through college. Joe, did you know that Dad's working on your parole? Yeah, he told me. He thinks the board should act on it in a couple of weeks. You don't seem very excited about it. It isn't that. What's the matter? What am I going to do when I get out of here? Who's going to take a chance with me? Can't you go back to the firm you were working for? I don't think they're too interested in ex-cons in a brokerage house. Well, why should it make any difference to them? It's all over and done with. You've already paid whatever debt you owed. Would you feel that way about it? Of course I would. Joe, there are people who've done much worse than you did walking the streets right now. But without a record, all the guys I've talked to tell me it's no cinch. 
That's why a lot of them end up back here. You won't. Oh, I don't think so. It isn't a question. The question is, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm not even a citizen anymore. What were you studying before the war? Business administration. I'll talk to Dad about it. It's not his problem. Maybe it is. It really wouldn't make any difference to you about me. Not a bit. It, it might be very important to me someday. If it is. Then you can count on it. I don't like it, Warden. The whole prison's too quiet. Believe me, they're up to something. Potty? Sure. I know he's up here. They wouldn't try to get through to him, would they? Well, you never know what they're planning. When they're too quiet, you can be sure it's something. Come in. Sorry to break in, Dad, but I've got to catch the train. Joe's going to drive me to the station. I don't believe your Aunt Ellen is really sick. I think she just wants to see you. Can I get you anything in the city? No, just say hello to your aunt for me, huh? Sure, Dad. Bye. Kay. How long are you going to be gone? About a week. I'm going to miss you. Me too. Tell Hubert I want to see him just as soon as he gets back, will you? All right. I'm just as glad she's getting away. Take a look, Warden. I've got the guards trying to keep them moving. But you bust up one bunch, you get another one behind your back right away. Come on, keep moving. Come on, break it up. Ponty, 1.30. Ponty, 1.30. All right, break it up, break it up. Got the conversation. Keep working. Twenty one thirty. Oh, we got a few minutes yet. Oh, good for us. Joe, here's a bench. Sit down. Not yet. Maybe in a few weeks. Huh? That's silly. Not to me. How long are you going to be gone? Oh, about a week. Is there anything I can do for you? Yeah, yeah. Might uh, tell you what, you might put an ad in the newspaper for me. One ex-convict with plans for the future needs a, needs a good job to carry out those plans. What plans, Joe? Like maybe sitting down with you, calling you by your first name sometime. Nobody's ever stopped you from doing that. Have a good time. Thanks. Hurry home. Thanks, Jen, I will. Joe, hmm? people aren't all alike. What I mean is, 
The woman who walked around you that day downtown. Everybody doesn't feel that way. What? <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. I hope I do. that it's here, all right. I wish you wouldn't walk so quietly. I never hear you coming, and I never hear you going. Yes, ma'am. Anything else, madam? No. Put those away. Yes, sir. What are you so nervous about? I don't know. That room you sleep in has no exit except through this office. There's no one around except my servants. Do you think they're gonna risk the easy jobs they've got to say nothing of their necks? They're gonna get me, Warden. I just know they're gonna get me. How? I don't know. I wish I did. Isn't there some way you can get me out of here? I'm doing everything I can. Yeah? Send him in. That's all, Pony. You can go. She get off all right, Joe? Yeah. Miss Nolan said that you wanted to see me. Yeah. Yeah, I did. I had to stop and change clothes. There's something going on around here, Joe. Do you know what it is? No, sir. The men are up to something. You sure you don't know what it is? I'm sure. Don't get involved in anything that would ruin your chances for parole. I'm not involved in anything. I've been thinking of writing a personal letter to that firm you used to work for. Well, I'd rather you didn't do that, sir. I figured maybe if I explained a few things... If you don't mind, I'd just as soon start someplace fresh where nobody knows what's happened, you know? I might have a chance to... Stay here. More coffee, madam? Why'd they be yammering like that? I don't know. Joe? Stay away from me, Pony. What do you mean? I never did anything to you. Did they got me framed. Were they after me? Joe, you've got to know something. You've heard him talk. You've...
Maybe it's a riot. Do you think that's what it is, Joe, a riot? Said I don't know. Joe, have a heart. You're not like the rest of them. I was framed into doing what I did, and I could explain it to everybody if you just give me a chance. Don't hold out on me. Give me a break. You get this through your head, Pony. I don't know a thing about what's going on. If I did, I wouldn't lift a finger to help you. That's why you're up. Joe, will you please go down and find out what it's all about for me? No. Look, I did you a favor once. So maybe I did spill about the break, but I didn't tell anybody that you were there. Do you think you'd be coming up for a parole if I'd have told? Two men are dead because you couldn't keep your mouth shut. But I didn't squeal on you. You owe me something for that. Just go down and talk to the guards. They'll know what it's all about. Look, you don't have to do anything to help me. Just find out what it's about so I can help myself. I'd do that much for you. I'd do that much for a dog. Get out of here, Joe, quick. Pony. Never mind, get out of here, quick. Come on, Joe, come on. Don't be a fool, you can't let them find you in here. Come on, Joe, come on. I don't know. Sometimes it's just letting loose. Then again, they pull a stunt like that to cover something else. Cover something? Buddy. I better call Dr. 
later. It's too late for that. Check the guards at the gate downstairs. Send the fingerprint man up here. Yes, Warden. You didn't do this, did you, Joe? No. Who did? Who did? I don't know. Martha. Yeah? See anybody go through this door? No. How long have you been sitting there? About 40 minutes. Who did it, Hubert? I don't know. The guards below don't know anything, but they might have slipped across the corridor when the yammering started. Have everybody who was in the building checked for fingerprints and bloodstains? Yes, Warden. You can't get away with it, Joe. You were in the room when Pontty was killed. No, I wasn't. I... What do you mean? Nothing. What are you going to tell him at the inquest? What do you mean, inquest? What are you going to say to him, Euford? What are you going to say to the coroner's jury? Nothing. That's going to sound great. You tell them nothing and they'll pin this on you so fast you won't know what hit you. Pin it on me. What else do you think they're going to do? You were the only one in the room with a murdered man. This is going to be a coroner's jury. It's out of my jurisdiction. I'll be a witness. I know you didn't do it, Joe, but that won't prove it to them. You know I can't tell you anything. I don't know anything of the kind. All I know is you're in a net. Now, either tell me who did it or get ready for the gas chamber yourself. I can't. You know what you're doing. You're trading away your life to live by a code that was set up by thieves and murderers. It's the only one you've given me a chance to have. What you don't seem to realize is the only friends I've got are the guys in here. Joe, that's all changed now. You get your parole next week. Are you going to throw everything away? Are you going to punish yourself for the rest of your life just because of a couple of bad breaks? You got a chance to live again. You think... You think I don't know that? Joe, listen to Look me. Look, while you quit pounding at me, I tell you I can't say anything. I'm going to keep pounding at you till I get some sense in your head. Now tell me, who killed Pony? All right. Just tell me which door he came in. That filing room in there is a dead end, so he must have come through that one or that one. Come on, Hufford, at least you can tell me that much. I thought you were ready to get out of here, Joe. Ready to take your place in the community. Let me tell you something. You're not ready for anything if you maintain values that'll let you protect a, a crummy murderer. I'm going to give you one more chance. Don't turn your back on it. Who killed Ponty? It's easy for you to stand there and tell somebody else what to do. No, it isn't. It's a lot easier than what you're asking me to do. You talk about values. What kind of values do you think I have now? The right ones. How do I know what's right? You've taken away everything I've got. You've taken away my freedom, my citizenship. The only thing you've left me is a certain sense of loyalty I've got to those guys down there I've had to live with. And now you want that, too. In there. Find anything? Not yet. What does he say? Nothing. We'll take that out of him. I guess you know what that means, don't you, Joe? That's solitary again. You haven't forgotten that, have you? No, I haven't forgotten. A bucket meal every seven days and bread and water in between. No lights, nobody to talk to. Come on, Joe, use some sense. Who killed that man? All right, Douglas, lock him up. He won't be so stubborn in a week. Whew. 
I want everything up here fingerprinted. The bridge, the car, to the stairs, the body in there. Don't miss a bet. Yes, sir. Get me the coroner. I don't want to throw my weight around, Mr. Nolan. But after all, I am state's attorney for this district. Congratulations. It's up to me to get some action on things like this. And so far, we haven't had any. Well, Mr. Owens, you just warm your chair for a few days and amuse yourself by talking to newspaper men. Mr. Nolan, there's been a murder committed. Not only in your office, but right in my district. Well, that's life for you. This killing happened over a week ago. So far, there's been no inquest. A coroner has done his duty. He's been out here three times. We've sworn in a jury, brought him out here in a bus, and had to take him back again each time you've asked for a postponement. Well, you won't even let us see this fellow, Huford. That's right. I won't. A man is dead, Warden, and somebody has to pay. I'm perfectly aware of that. <laughs> well, of course. Now, I've come out here in a frank and friendly spirit. I've laid my cards on the table. I want you to do the same. I'm perfectly willing to do that. All right, then. I don't want any more delays. There's been a murder committed. There's going to be an inquest, a trial, and a penalty. That's the law in this state. I don't know if you know that or not, Mr. Nolan. I know it, Mr. Owens. Or should I call you Junior? I learned this business while you were still playing hopscotch. And what could possibly be your motives? Motives? I'm trying to clear this up, and I don't want any fumbling schoolboys like yourself coming in to mess it up. Now, you and your car and his jury lay off of me, and... I'll get to the bottom of this thing in my own way. I'm going to have an inquest here tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I'm having you called on a subpoena, Mr. Nolan. And you're going to testify. I guess you can do that if you want to. I want to. See you tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, Mr. Nolan. Junior. so easy for you. You wouldn't have to stay down here. You wouldn't even have to stay at all. There's a parole up there just waiting for you. You could be out of here. Why do you want to kick yourself around? Give me the other candy bar, will you, Burke? You only brought one with you, Captain. Why didn't you tell me, Burke? You knew we brought that down for Joe. Can you get out of here? Tell him, kid, tell him. All right, let's cut it out. Who killed Pony? Come on out of there. Who killed him? I said, who killed him? Come on, get, get out of here. Get him. Tell him, Joe, that's the stuff. for solitary. All right, Blake. Hi, Nick. Hi. Who eats today? Hubert. Has he been down there a week? Sure he has. Douglas Adam every minute. Captain Douglas to you. <clears throat> this stuff tastes terrible. Needs salt. Salt. Here. Hurry up. All right, all right. Come on, let's get going. All right. Guilford, cell number three.
Okay. Hello, Dad. Welcome home. How's your Aunt Ellen? Convinced that we're all going to be murdered in our beds. Let's have some lunch, huh? Mallaby! He just went down to the main kitchen. Who was that who met me at the station? A new trustee. Where's Joe? Well, that's a long story. I suppose you read in the papers that Ponty was murdered. Yes. Joe's a material witness. He was in my office when it happened. You don't think he did it? I know he didn't, but he knows who did. Where is he? In solitary. Solitary? For what? I've got to find out who did this. He knows and he won't talk. You've put him back in solitary again. This doesn't concern you, Kay. You don't understand these things. I've got to get to the bottom of this right away. If I don't, they'll bust me wide open. You think you can torture him into talking? This isn't torture. Oh, what do you call it? Gentle persuasion? This isn't outside, Dad, where you'd either have to charge him or let him go. He doesn't have an attorney here or any rights. He can tell me what he knows and pick up a parole that's lying right on my desk. You don't call that torture. And supposing he did talk. You yourself hated Ponty for what he did. This is different. How? Keep out of this, will I you? won't keep out of it, because I've never seen you do a rotten thing like this before in my life. You set him up in the first place when you didn't think he deserved it. You had to do that. But now you're trying to turn him into the worst sort of man just to save your own face. That's not a very nice way of putting it. I know it. But that's what it amounts to. You must think a lot of them to talk to me like this. I do. Yeah, you must think an awful lot of it. Go ahead and unpack your bags. Everything will work out all right. Dad. He needs somebody on his side. He's got you, hasn't he? And you've always packed a lot of weight around here. I gotta pick up some more meat for lunch. The warden's daughter just came in. Nick? Yeah? Give him what he wants. Okay. Let's have a couple of more chops. I planted a knife in Huford's pail. That's great. He'll either kill himself or Douglas. I'm hoping it's Douglas. I ought to knock some sense into your head. What are you talking about? I thought I was doing him a favor. Give me your gun. No, I'm saving that for the break. Give it to me. Psst. So that's what I told the Duchess. <laughs> hurry him up, Alibi. Let's not take all day. Yeah, hurry it up, Nick. something? I never liked you. Are you kidding? Yeah, I'm kidding. Douglas will love to hear about this. Let's take him to solitary. Get back to it. Open up Buford's cell. Yes. You don't like me, huh? Well, what did he do? He slugged me, Captain. I was just standing there thinking about my day off when he walked up and slugged me. <laughs> you cracking under the strain? When I don't like people, I always do something about it. <laughs> we'll see how you feel when you get hungry. Put him in Huford's cell. Come on, you're going out. Come on, get up. Douglas. Yeah, I'm gonna 
a chance, Melody. Who is it? Mallaby. What happened? We were just bringing Huford out when they brought Mallaby down for slugging a guard. Open the gate. Look out, he's got a gun. Give him another treatment. Hold it. Mallaby, this is the warden. Hiya, warden. Come on out, Mallaby, before we throw tear gas in there. I'd like to come out, warden. I really would. All right. Throw your gun out first. Then come out with your hands up. And get shot as soon as I hit the open? Come on out, Mallaby. You won't get shot. You've got my word on that. seem to win, do you, Mallaby? You've got to win sometimes, Douglas. Feel the knife? What's the idea, Mallaby? This isn't going to do you any good. Tell him, Douglas. Tell him how one glass of beer can add up to 12 years. Tell him the reason I'm going to kill you and why I waited for three years for the chance to do it. Just for the record, Warden, I got Pony, too. <laughs> You can understand now why I, I couldn't tell you anything. Well, I still don't believe in what you did, but I suppose... It... Hello? Oh, hello, McKay. Yeah, you can tell Junior he can have his inquest tomorrow, and that way we can all waste a lot of time. Why? Because I already caught the murderer, that's why. Oh, I'm going to worry an awful lot about being unorthodox. Go ahead and tell the governor he can send his investigators over. Half of them belong in here anyway. Who? What about him? He got his parole three hours ago. Sure, I signed it, and so did you. Mac, if you try anything like that, I'll go back into private practice. I'll not only make that parole stick, I'll... Look, my resignation is signed and right here on my desk. If Mitchell or anybody else isn't satisfied, all they have to do is come over and pick it up. No, no, I'm not sore. I just love this job. You left here three hours ago. I'm a little behind schedule. You better get started. I'll drive you to the train. But when I start to earn a living again, you won't mind if I write your daughter, will you? Okay? Get your coat. Meet me at the car. Be sure and get her forwarding address. We may all be sprung from this place about the same time. 